Hey guys, for today's video I thought I might talk a little bit about the YouTube ad apocalypse. It's a pretty big subject and reaches just about every channel here on YouTube and it seems that just about every channel here on YouTube is making a video talking about it and I guess today we are going to be no exception. Now, for those of you that don't know what the ad apocalypse is, it is effectively an advertiser boycott here on YouTube. Most of the largest advertisers here on YouTube have decided to withdraw funding from buying advertising because um, certain uh, news outlets have reported um, various advertisements being shown next to things like David Duke videos and ISIS beheading videos. And as you can imagine, brands got a little bit squeamish by this news and decided to withdraw funding for fear of, um, you know, like um, outrage and backlash and so forth. So that's effectively the situation that we're in now. And in response to this, Google and this has been going on for quite some time, but now it's obviously been expediated, is that Google and YouTube have decided to um, increase the amount of how they classify videos or increase the level to which they classify videos here on YouTube by advertiser friendliness. Uh, some people have obviously expressed concerns because this is kind of a, a way of directing the content here on YouTube um, you know, in many ways, it's a, you know, a form of censorship because you're using money to then control speech, I guess, or it's at least seen as not being in the spirit of a, of a platform of free speech, you might expect. Um, and also, of course, uh, a lot of content creators are suffering financially. Um, a lot of channels that are considered in any way controversial. So we can talk about politics and drama channels as well as channels that might feature violence, sex or gore. Um, you know, they have been obviously the worst um, hit out of this, uh, you know, out of this new stage of reclassifying YouTube videos according to advertiser friendliness. But also uh, all channels have been affected in one way or another because there are just fewer ads being bought out on YouTube now. So everyone's seen a pretty um, nasty cut in the amount of money made from uh, YouTube ad revenue. And it wasn't exactly like it was particularly high to begin with. This is a blow to, um, you know, uh, uh, quite an unstable, a very unstable industry. So um, a lot of people, as you can imagine, have decided to take, you know, have, have, have um, not been happy about this and have decided to take a lot of precautions. And you might have seen a lot of content creators take out Patreon accounts and so forth. And I think this is probably um, one of the, the benefits out of all of this is that uh, a lot of content creators are diversifying their revenue for, you know, to, to stop things like this happening again. Now... The, the, you know, I, I'm pretty sure there are ulterior motives behind this. I think the fact that 2017 has been predicted as a particularly bad year for retail overall might have made this a particularly opportune year to try and hustle YouTube into lowering their advertising rates because that's what a lot of this boycott stuff is going to end up achieving is that if you've only got you know x number of million dollars to spend on advertising um, you can withdraw a load of that in the early stages as a you know in terms of a in terms of a boycott and you can guarantee YouTube and Google will massively lower the, the cost of advertising to try and get these guys on board and um, and, and uh, it's further devaluate uh, devaluing um, online advertising and the pay per view uh, for online advertising as it currently stands is so much lower than it is for TV despite the fact that um, engagement and conversion is a lot higher than TV I used to work in marketing and you know I dealt with a lot of TV marketing and TV marketing is some of the most overpriced and ridiculous advertising you can you can even imagine it and a lot of the time in a lot of cases when it comes to things like television advertising and uh, TV advertising is that advertisers aren't just paying uh, to have their product or their brand featured in a prominent place, but a lot of times they are paying that space so that their competitors can't use it. Um, whereas you don't get that benefit in uh, on YouTube because two advertisers uh, who are directly in competition with each other can can be uh, advertised side by side. In fact, if if for example Coca Cola with their official YouTube channel could very well have a have a Pepsi pre roll ad uh, on one of their videos or a Pepsi on you know, on the Pepsi YouTube channel could very well be a Coca Cola pre roll ad. So uh, I I can imagine brands and advertisers don't like that and. The thing is, when brands and advertisers don't get what they want, they tend to be pretty, you know, bullish about it. And I'm not necessarily saying this is 
um, the, the advertisers themselves aren't necessarily responsible for this, but I'm saying that, you know, the timing is very convenient and they're going to benefit out of this. So it might not, you know, it might have been in their interest not to have, partic you know, not to have fought this, um, this particular uh, outrage machine on this one. I think, you know, if you were to look for a central causal point, you're looking at the uh, news media that actually sort of broke the story. And that stands to reason as well, because traditional print media is dying. It's dying a death in really, really badly. Um, it, I think I've, I've, I've read a few, uh, read in a few places, it's had a recent uptick um, at the beginning of 2017. But in general, like for the, the broader um, trend of the industry, print media is going out of style. And um, and you can and, and journalists are now working like you know they're working harder as well they they, they um, you know back in the old days being a journalist used to be like an esteemed profession and um, and now you know if you look at some of the the workloads that journalists are under they have to get x number of blog posts out they have to get x number of articles x number of tweets and journalists nowadays have been you know they're not just journalists they they they're cameramen uh, you know they're photographers and some of them are cameramen like i have seen one person um uh, news teams effectively these days uh, filming interviews off their phone um because you know technology whereas whereas you know in the in the golden age of uh, of, of print media you'd have um, a, a journalist for, who, who took the story and wrote the article, you'd have a photographer. And then, you know, of course, with TV, you'd have camera crews and all this kind of stuff. But now it's all, you know, you, you can do it with this one one device here. And uh, so journalists are not just expected to be journalists now, they're expected to be social media people as well. And it seems that social media has become entrenched in so many of um, aspects of our professional lives that it is, to be honest, it is deeply concerning that nowadays... Um, like branding yourself isn't just something that's seen to be done in the entertainment industry it's it's now it's seen as just a general thing that you want to do if you want to be professionally independent or um or, or just you know professionally prominent i guess which is a i think is, is is tragic because what it does is it takes resources away from developing your actual career and um encourages you to put resources into the perception of developing your professional career and i feel that you know maybe that is the world that we're moving towards which kind of sucks and um and i can understand why old print journalists would get incredibly worried and scared and frightened and lash out in uh, ways towards new media that we might consider to be incredibly brutal and bullish and attacking. Um, because it's their jobs and it's their industry and it's their livelihood that's basically, you know, going down the pan right now. And, um, and, and, and you've got to expect a lot of resistance there. I'm not saying it's justified. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's happening. So, um, I think that, it, you know, in a lot of cases, I'm just going to check my notes here if you see me looking down a lot. Uh, in a lot of cases, you know, the, I think there is a cash motive here. Let's face it, brands don't give a damn about whether, or, you know, about, about racism in general, to be honest. Many of the companies that have taken part, or, or, or one particular company that has taken part in the ad boycott, violently suppresses union activity the world over. Um, but oh, oh no, our advert appeared on a David Duke video. Oh, we must withdraw all our money. But no, we'll, we'll, no, we'll still, we'll still harass and bully, uh, you know, union organisers um, because we can get away with that. But no, 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 no. Like, you know, it, oh, we might be seen as being racist. That's, that's the thing that we can't allow. We can, you know, we, we can be as, uh, as violent and as, as aggressive to poor people as much as we want uh, in foreign countries. But no, when it comes to when it comes to YouTube, we have to be seen as being pristine and politically correct and and uh, faultless. And it's, you know, it's it's a uh, pretty. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dystopian, maybe. So, um, so yeah, I think a lot of it is down that basically retail is having a bad year. Um, print media is is really struggling in general, um, and a lot of it is because people just don't, don't want to pay for news anymore as well. Um, and 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 you know, people sort of go onto a news website and expect to get it for free. And what that does is that it does uh, indirectly or through through or systemically rather um, put more pressure on um, on journalists and puts you know them out of work because it's you know the business model is failing and yeah like i'm sure many of you guys would say well yeah improve your business model but um 
But having paid for media means that you're the customer, whereas having advertised supported media means that you're the product. Um, so, uh, you know, I, th I think that there, there is a merit for being the consumer rather than the product. But um, but again, I know what it's like to be broke as a joke and and I know what it's like to not be able to afford to even, you know, to, to, to not to be able to afford basic entertainment as well. So um, so I get that advertising has uh, like, you know, it, it's it certainly helped me a lot. Like, I, you know, it, it, it certainly uh, allowed me a lot more enjoyment for a lot less money than um, than I could expect. So. Um, like I say, like I suppose diversity is the uh, is the way to go here. So it's not like I've been counting, but this has been, I think, about my sixth YouTube is over party. Uh, it does seem that pretty much every year a big event comes and looks like it's going to shake up YouTube as we know it, and it never really does. Um, I think that this is a particularly bad storm, but it's just a storm we have to weather for now. Um, and I'm sure when it comes to the second half of this year in the run-up to Christmas, we'll start seeing advertising revenue return to normal. Um, but um, I'm going to also take this as a bit of a warning uh, and I'm going to try something new. Now, as you guys know, I've been flirting with podcasts for quite some time. It's something I've always wanted to do, but something that I've always struggled with. Um, part of it's planning, part of it's that it takes a lot more work than you might think behind the scenes, uh, part of it's hosting, part of it's finding people to do it with, and I'm going to give it another go. But I'm going to start this podcast over on Patreon. Now, it's not going to cost anything. There's not going to be any goals or anything like that. Um, it's just that it's just going to be hosted on Patreon. In fact, one of the reasons it's going to be hosted on Patreon is because Patreon hosts audio files for free, uh, up to 100 megabytes, which is more than enough for your average podcast. So, uh, and if not, I guess you can break it down. Um, and on top of that as well, of course, it does give me a, it does give the Patreon page for like this channel and what I do here on YouTube a bit more of a purpose, a reason for you guys to go over and check it out. They also do RSS um, feeds now, so it actually works as a proper podcast as, you know, as, as you might expect a podcast should. And it would, you know, works with um, RSS readers and podcast uh, listening apps and all that kind of stuff. So it's quite good from that side of things. Um, and I guess I didn't really want my Patreon page to just be a like-for-like -like clone of this channel. That just seems like, I don't know, like it's not generating anything of any real value. So uh, because of a number of those reasons, and also I wanted something that wasn't on YouTube, because YouTube is, is very much... Um, you know, it's it's very monolithic, and it certainly seems very monolithic, and it is Google orientated, and there is a lot of tracking involved. And Google is, you know, Google is a company that's given us a lot, but it's also a company that comes with a lot of baggage as well. And it's just nice to step outside of that ecosystem and um, have some content that is pretty independent. Also, when it comes to, to podcast files like MP3s or OGGs or, or whatever, um, they're a lot more portable. So, you know, because they're a smaller file size and because um, they're, they're typically shared around as the files that they are, um, it tends to make them a little bit more portable, easier to back up. You know, I, I can move the podcast from one, one location to another, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it gives me um, a lot of options there. Um, also, and this one probably won't necessarily mean too much to you guys, but audio-only content is a lot easier to make, a lot easier than, than you think more so than video. So for example, this video here, it's just me talking into a camera. I don't even have that many cuts or edits that I'm, I'm going to make. This is just going to be me talking uh, from the heart, if you will. Um, and even now, I've had to bother with lighting. I've had to turn off noisy appliances. I've had to charge up the batteries in the microphone. I've had to make sure the camera was charged. Last video I recorded, the battery went out. Yeah, it went out like halfway through, which is, is fine. It was lucky. And I um, but 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 you know it's it's everything here. It takes up a little bit of your mind space. It's a, it's a little bit of mental factoring that goes into it. And and you know I've made like a list. Of, I made like a list of notes on this as well. So whereas the audio only content is a lot easier to make, and that means it gives me a lot more opportunities. It means that I can actually make more of the content. So this is likely to be additional content rather than instead of anything on this channel. So that's something I want to be particularly clear on as well. This isn't like instead of anything on this channel. This is additional because it is 
easy content to make. All I've got to do is get the microphone charged up and basically um, turn it on. Also, it allows me to record away from home so I can do podcasts with other people um, in real time. Because when you do a podcast um, using Skype or what have you, there is a slight delay that does actually change the dynamic of the conversation uh, a lot more than you than, than you might even hear, I guess. Um, but when you have like a you know when you're in a real life setting or what have you and you've got the uh, the microphone on it makes it a lot um it makes it for a for a better podcast in my experience as well so i can do that as well whereas if i had to have like a consistent visual layout with a camera and everything it would there would be so much stuff that just wouldn't even be on the table and would be so so much more difficult that um it would be more trouble than it's worth but a quick little audio um you know, comment commentary or podcast or what have you, uh, I think could could work out really quite nicely. So if you've got an RSS reader, you'd be able to, you can subscribe. I guess I'll put the link in the description as well. And I'll be working on stuff this week for it. Um, I'm going to give it a trial. I'm hoping to go to the end of the year. If you guys aren't big fans of it, um, then then I'll you know I'll, you know if you guys don't uh, don't listen, then I'll I'll probably cease it. Um, down the line at some point, but um, I feel that now's a good opportunity to try new things, so why not? Um, anyway, thank you very much for uh, bearing with me through this video. Um, I hope the words that have come out of my mouth have been somewhat mildly interesting. Um, that's about it for me today. Please, please, please leave your thoughts in the comments section below on this, specifically if there's anything you'd like to see in the podcast or here in the podcast, or if you've got any ideas, uh, I'd be more than happy to hear them. Um, yeah, I think that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.